Perth, Western Australia, and a research student at the University of Notre Dame, Australia. Um, my research is on suburban landscapes, on how we experience them, how they are changing, and ideas for architectural practice within them. I should clarify that I'm not defining landscape as a single part, but as the integrated image of a setting. So when I refer to the suburban landscape, I refer to these integrated images of topography, trees, gardens, but also of fences, buildings, rooftops, and even sky, light, and weather. I will begin by describing what I believe is the major issue Perth faces, and that is infill housing. Over the last 50 years, Perth, suburb, Perth suburbs have been infilling and changing dramatically from 1970 to 2020, and now facing a doubling population over the next 50 years, these suburbs must infill again by 50% or more. Through figure ground, the impact of increased housing density on open space can be clearly seen. Room for gardens and trees is erased and views between buildings are blocked. The experience of Perth's suburban landscape shifts from being relatively open and tree filled to one dominated by paved driveways, brick walls and tiled rooftops. This dramatic change is an environmental issue. It is a biodiversity loss issue and it is a thermal heat gain issue in our hot, dry climate. But it is also an aesthetic issue, an issue of beauty in the landscapes where most of us live and spend most of our lives. I'd like to point out that this image here is not a collage. This is an actual view in an actual Australian suburb. The cause of this change is the business as usual infill model subdivision. Here, a property is typically cleared completely of house, garden and trees. It is flattened and three new houses are built in its place. These new houses are built boundary to boundary. 25% of the property is turned into paved driveway. There is minimal open space for gardens and zero open space for tall trees. This subdivision infill is incredibly popular. It is by far the most dominant force changing Perth suburbs. And it is popular because in Australia, but particularly in Perth, there is a strong nearly 80% preference towards a single house on its own private piece of land, even if it looks like this. But beyond just housing preferences, there is another driving force. Houses aren't built for living, they are built as investments. Subdivision is not just for larger developers, but accessible to anyone that can get a loan. It is accessible to mum and dad investors who see subdivision as a way of making short-term profits. This commodification of housing further incentivizes these developments and contributes massively to the changing experience of Perth's suburban landscapes. The actual impact of this subdivision infill can best be seen on properties that have never been subdivided. These rare, long-established properties typically have modest-sized houses on much bigger lots and are surrounded by mature gardens and tall native trees. These properties show what entire suburbs could have been if it wasn't for the subdivision infill model. These long-established properties also show us the potential of Perth's suburban landscape. They show us what we may achieve if we broaden our priorities beyond housing density into a landscape experience focus. The benefits of such a landscape are clear, not just to ecosystem health, biodiversity and mitigating heat gain, but to our own health, well-being, and stress levels. This is well-defined in research such as Kaplan and Kaplan's attention re restoration theory or Roger Ulrich's stress reduction theory. It is also well established in Australian cities through research such as uh, Taylor Leckie and Hoculi's focus group studies in 2019. So how may an architectural practice be informed by the suburban landscape understanding and focus? How may we better design infill housing that retains and restores suburban landscape as well as strengthening our experience of it? One possibility may be to embrace the subdivision model and its popularity, 
but to change its proportions. The NHFIC projects that over the next 10 years, 64% of new Australian households will be either single persons or a couple without children. These people only require one, maybe two bedrooms. Yet in Perth, only 15% of houses, including units and apartments are this size. There is a clear opportunity to stop building unnecessarily oversized houses in the suburbs and to start building modest one and two bedroom subdivision that leaves 75% of its open space for garden and trees. And even more significantly, this infill could be single storey so that it does not block neighbouring landscape views. It could infill backyards densely while only having a minimal visual impact and allow even medium sized trees to be seen over fences and roof lines. This alternative subdivision infill would be characterized by modest sized houses on much larger lots surrounded by garden and tall native trees. Houses could be freely orientated to the suburban landscape view in any direction. They could be free to have large openings to gardens and landscape without privacy concerns. Program could be split across the site and connected by paths, or these houses could fit into unconventionally shaped sites, such as tight triangles. From this infill, a closeness to garden could be embraced. Internal views could be focused to above fence lines and to the suburban landscape, to rooftops, trees, the changing colour of the sky and to incoming weather. Occupants could live with an intuitive awareness of the outside conditions and the broader setting in which they dwell. This idea of a modest size infill with a large garden is not only potentially popular, but is highly flexible in its configuration and it can fit onto nearly every suburban block. It is potentially a highly scalable idea. Just how the business as usual subdivision erodes the suburban landscape and erases open space for trees and gardens, this alternative infill may retain, improve and restore the suburban landscapes of Perth, Western Australia. The plan here illustrates 30% infill achieved with minimal visual impact. And that retains 75% of each property as open space, locked away from future development. Infills such as this could be combined with new high and medium density ideas in order to achieve and hit targets of 50, 70, and even 100% infill to accommodate Perth's growing population without further urban sprawl and destruction of our delicate fringe landscapes. My research is very much ongoing and will soon continue into practice, but this is what I believe we need more of here in Perth not just intelligent density solutions and more sustainable housing, but also a deeper understanding of how we experienced the suburbs as landscapes and an infill architecture informed by that. I'd like to end this presentation by extending my thanks to the Architecture Foundation, as well as my ongoing thanks to my research supervisors, Dr. Robin Craig and Dr. Simon Pendle, and to the University of Notre Dame, Australia.